Instead, we have the opportunity to make a habit of empathy, to recognize ourselves and each other. And when you turn on the TV or open the newspaper and you hear about all the troubles in the world, there will be pundits and there will be politicians who will tell you that it's somebody else's fault and somebody else's problem to fix. They'll tell you that Americans who sleep in the streets and beg for food got there because they're all lazy or they're weak in spirit. That the immigrants who risk their lives to cross a desert have nothing to contribute to this country and no desire to embrace its ideals. That the inner city children who are trapped in dilapidated schools can't learn and won't learn, and so we should just give up on them entirely. That the innocent people who are slaughtered and expelled from places like Darfur are somebody else's problem to take care of. And when you hear all this, the easiest thing to do is to do nothing at all. Turn off the TV, put down the newspaper, walk away from the stories about Iraq or poverty or violence or joblessness or hopelessness. You go about your own busy lives, remain detached, remain indifferent, remain safe. But if you should ever think about taking this path, I'd ask you first to remember. Remember witnessing the pain and neglect that indifference can cause. How entire neighborhoods in this city were left to drown because no one thought to make sure that every person had the means to escape. Because those in charge assumed that everybody could fill up their SUV with $100 worth of gasoline and load it up with some sparkling water and go check into a hotel with their credit card. Remember what happens when responsibilities are ignored and the buck is passed. When the White House blames FEMA and FEMA blames the state of Louisiana and pretty soon no one's fixing the problem because everybody thought it was somebody else's job. And whenever you're tempted to view the poor or the ill or the persecuted as, quote, those people, people in their own world with their own problems, remember always your neighbors in places like the Ninth War, men and women and children who, just like you, wanted desperately to escape to somewhere better. Now, if you remember all this, if you remember what happened in New Orleans, if you allow it to change you forever, if it sears your soul, know that there's another path that you can take. This one's going to be more difficult. It asks more of you. It asks you to leave here and not just pursue your own individual dreams, but to help perfect our collective dream as a nation. It asks you to realize there's more to life than being rich or thin or young or famous or safe or entertained. It asks you to recognize that there are people out there who need you. You know, there's a lot of talk in this country about the federal budget deficit. One of the things I think we should talk more about is our empathy deficit, the ability to put ourselves in somebody else's shoes, to see through their eyes, the child who's hungry, or the steel worker who's been laid off, or the family who's lost the entire life they built together when the storm came to town. When you think like this, it becomes harder not to act. It becomes harder not to help. And for each of you, this desire to do for others and serve your community will come even easier if you allow yourself to remember what you saw here in New Orleans. Because aside from all the bad that came from Katrina, the failures and neglect, the incompetence, the apathy, you were also a witness to the unbelievable good that happened here. Good that many forgot was even possible. You saw people from every corner of this country drop what they were doing, leave their homes, and come to New Orleans. Americans who didn't know a soul in the entire city, but found their own 
piece of driftwood, built their own makeshift raft, and waded through the streets in this city, saving anyone they could. You saw doctors and nurses who refused to leave their city or their patients, even when they were told time and time again by local officials that it was no longer safe, even when helicopters were waiting to take them away. Men and women who stayed to care for the sick and dying long after their medical equipment and electricity were gone. And after the storm had passed, you saw a spirit of generosity that spanned an entire globe with billions and billions in donations coming from tiny, far-off nations like Qatar and Sri Lanka. Think about that. There are places a lot of folks couldn't even identify on a map. Sri Lanka was still recovering from the devastation caused by its own disaster, the tsunami of last year, and yet they heard about the tragedy in New Orleans, and they gave. Now remember always this goodness. Remember always that while many in Washington and on all levels of government failed New Orleans, there were plenty of ordinary people who displayed extraordinary humanity during this city's hours of need. See the world through other people's eyes. Now, empathy is a quality of character that can change the world.